Welcome back to Next Level Adventures. And welcome to, oh, such a hidden gem, Pitsanaluk province. As you can see, I'm sweating because I've been running around like a blue ass fly today trying to capture and share with you this province. I don't have the words and the skill set to really do this place justice. Just sit down and relax. I'll try my best to document what's happened today and what's going to happen any moment because something special is going to happen at the end of this video right here. Right here, something amazing is about to happen. But I just, I, oh, I, honestly, I'm speechless. This place is unbelievable. And a big shout out to one of my followers, Nuka. He reached out to me ages ago and said, when you're in Pit Santa Look, DM me and I'll give you some recommendations. Luckily, today I sent him a message and he hooked me up with all of these places you're gonna see in this video. Pit Santa Look, the perfect place to come if you wanna get away. We're still in Northern Thailand, but get away from you know Chiang Mai and the other popular destinations and experience the light and the color and the majesty of Pit Santa Look. Anyway, I'll shut up and let's pick up because firstly I want to show you the city not far away from here because that was really beautiful as well. Okay, so um, before we head over into the mountainous areas recommended to me by one of my followers uh, on Instagram, Nuka. Hello, Nuka. <laughs> uh, we've stopped in the town centre of Pitsana Look itself just for a night because I drove here for two hours today and it was quite a long journey and I was tired and it was just a bit too far. Everything's a bit too far on Dreamy. <laughs> so I've stopped here and I've got a 500 bar guest house, you know, super simple. And behind it is this incredible temple. Now this is actually the most famous place in this province, very revered. The car park is massive because lots of people come up here from Bangkok and elsewhere because inside this incredible palace-like temple complex is the most beautiful Buddha statue I've ever seen so far on this trip. We've seen ginormous ones, we've seen intricate ones, but this one has to be the most luxurious. It's solid gold. And the room itself is sur surrounded by chandeliers, black and gold contrasted paintwork, incredible watercolors on the walls, and just... <sighs> There's something about being inside a temple that I can never explain. Uh, same as in a church, and same in a mosque, same in any place of worship, even in a cemetery, you get that soul-tingling feeling. And inside there, it was something else. It was completely quiet, and I usually i don't film inside temples because you know i don't want to film people praying and things but it was just so beautiful i had to just sort of get a few snippet shots for you because if you do have the chance to come to this area come into this temple 100 percent it's free to get in and it's got this 14th century style well not style this was built in the 14th century but it's got the same structure here as we saw when we were in Sukhothai and Kampeng Pet in the ancient version of Thailand pre-Bangkok capital days. Buddhism is not all over Thailand you know when we were in the deep south we were surrounded by mosques and we hardly saw any Buddhist temples and recently I was actually in Chiang Rai and I saw lots of churches um, but they were all shut because it wasn't Sunday when I was there but these areas of Thailand central and the East San areas, I think we're gonna find a lot, almost only Buddhism temples. And uh, this one in particular, magnificent.
the people of this province are very artistic, very creative. Have a look at this. This is an awesome piece of street art on the wall next to this person's house. And using a hammer or something, they've smashed away the concrete and exposed the brick within it. And then they've added their own flair with paint for her skin, her eyes, even her bottom lip. But it's a really good example of using the textures given to you or th from exposing the innards and creating a masterpiece really. That is a fantastic piece of street art. I mean, isn't that's what all street art should be like. It shouldn't just be graffiti, you know. This is really tasteful, I think. The next morning I woke up to a beautiful day and we had an hour drive to the absolutely gorgeous mountains of Pitsana Look. However, on the way I did pull into a Honda shop. I like to keep Dreamy in tip-top condition or as near to tip-top as can be. So quite often I have to change her oils, pump air into her tires, give her chain a little lube. You know, it's important to keep Dreamy lubed up and, you know, ready for action. And uh, <laughs> I also saw this beautiful Honda Forza. These are 350cc. I see them all the time on the roads. They're beautiful bikes, very comfortable. I think potentially in the future that could be another option. But for now, Dreamy's all good, man. When I arrived in the mountainous area, I drove around looking for a place to stay, although a lot of places were full. And the only place I could find, well, is this crazy place let me show you around okay so we've made it to the area recommended by nuka lovely drive here about an hour away from downtown where we stayed last night and i have to share with you this area well this accommodation this is the this is the maddest most creative arguably ugly or arguably beautiful depending on your <laughs> way of thinking let me show you around and let me know in the comments what you think would you stay in this resort so the first thing is this is the breakfast and coffee shop so you come here for breakfast and you can get a coffee and a drink here there's also a little lunch spot just on the other side but then here look you've got this um old mercedes convertible here with this strange paint effect well the car so what do you cup nice car cup <laughs> and then uh, this is a room you can stay in this converted bus and they even have a little wooden door on there and a staircase and there's a roof terrace so you can stay in a bus and um, then they have a set of three wooden cabins and they're 1200 baht a night and they have aircon and they look really nice and I'm really experimenting well not experimenting I'm very curious about wooden houses at the moment it's one of the things that YouTube keeps recommending me and I keep watching people building and buying wooden homes it also if you want you know just some toes sticking out of the out of the ground you've got that as well <laughs> i don't understand the coolest thing i'll take you to before i show you my room is you can do van life van life in thailand you can do it here you can see the air conditioning unit so you have air con and then they're on this concrete and they're they're wired in and plumbed in and uh now, can I open this? No, but luckily she did. She did. I did ask when I checked in and I had my phone. So inside you can see they've like got wooden floor. And then over here where the, the driving seat is, that's the air con on the TV. And then they have a mattress and it's quite simple. And obviously it's not a big van, but they have about five or six different colors to choose from. And they're all fully booked. Uh, it's definitely a gimmick, but I like what they've done. They've even got ladders at the back there to go up to the surface or the roof, I should say. And maybe you could lie on there and look at the stars and stuff. And I mean, it's quite an incredible location. Then they have another one of these turquoise colored pond water areas, which when I was in Chiang Rai, we saw one at that Instagram cafe and Someone let me know that this is just uh, pond dye. You can buy it in 
most shops apparently and it doesn't toxic the water it doesn't hurt the fish they can live happily in there and it just gives it that Maldives effect so this is another room converted bus like this is a proper city bus you know this looks like the bus I used to get to school the K1 from New Malden to Surrey no where, where, where was my school my school was in can't remember the name anyway <laughs> okay I can see this one looks nice they have an actual private shower inside and then at the back here they have a mattress and the air cons there and they have a little desk and table and some steps this is really cool and I don't know how much this one is I just didn't ask obviously I'll drop the location of this resort I mean, if you fancy a crazy crazy accommodation experience in a bus in a van in a wooden well that's not crazy but something mad and come here this was the only room available tonight um 900 baht and it's very overpriced for what it is you're paying the premium for the view and for the fact that you know this place is busy every night and they can charge what they want because <laughs> you know it's all about the instagram it's all about the hashtag van life no banister quite dangerous Ooh. Oh, okay, that's about as high as I'll go. Because if you fall off this, you're dead. And you can see they have a little satellite tea dish and beautiful view. Both, be oh, both behind me. And across the rice fields and the weirdness. This, this place is so random. Like, you know, cars, bats, vans, buses, wooden houses turquoise heart-shaped pools okay so let's come into the room so this is what you get for 900 baht ladies and gentlemen it's complimentary water and toilet roll and a plastic little bin and a double mattress two pillows and a duvet air con which is on a little television with thai tv <laughs> remote control and that's it yeah it's very small very cute but very overpriced, 900 baht. This is just a beautiful place to drive around, period. <laughs> just come here just to explore. There's so many little country roads. And all I'm trying to do is get closer to these limestone cliffs. I've been trying to figure out what they remind me of or where they remind me of. And uh, the nearest I can get to is Halong Bay in Vietnam, which I visited many years ago. Obviously, it doesn't have the ocean and it's not out to sea. But the way that the jungle, you know, climbs up the limestone and makes it to the summits, it's uh, very reminiscent, I must say. And just look, oh, look at this. There is uh, some sort of camping site here. Now we've already got our accommodation, <laughs> but uh, let's have a little nosy here. Just look at this, look up there. Oh, karaoke, karaoke. What are you singing? Let it go, let it go. I am one with the wind and sky. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Okay, um, I'm just struggling because I've been bitten, not bitten, stung by a wasp. Can you see it's quite red and uh, swollen? I get stung by bees a lot. Because they fly into you and then you swap them away but they still sting you before they get a chance. And uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> so when I flew the drone and when you look at these rocks, some of them have flags. Oh, she's singing again. Um, some of them have flags and ropes and you can climb up and so I used Google Maps and I, I found out there's a tour company you go through the National Park you pay 500 baht and a guide will take you and your friends up there and I thought brilliant we'll go up this afternoon for sunset or maybe tomorrow morning and I called ahead and I said hi can I do it and they said oh, are you vaccinated and I said um, yes they said okay come to the office apply and we'll send off the paperwork and it'll be ready in three days <laughs> so i was like i can't wait three days i'm just in town for a night can we not just climb up the rock and 
I mean, I have a vaccine, I have the paperwork. But no, this is the thing with Thailand. Some things are a little bit backwards. Some things. Many things they are far ahead of. You know, online banking and many other things in society. I just think of Thailand as like so far ahead than the West. But little things like this. You know, why is it okay for thousands of people to go into one 7-Eleven in the village every day, touching everything, but you can't climb a rock without a three-day paperwork red tape? So I'm sorry, Pitsana look. I would have gotten the best footage of up there, especially on a day like today. It would have been amazing. And it would have been a great experience, but I can't wait three days. So me and Dreamy are just gonna find other adventures. So let's go. This is the village, and what a village that they have, you know? You've got your little farmer's house here, and just little houses everywhere, little wooden houses. And I just had a thought, sorry, that's why I stopped speaking, because have a look, there's all these bat signs, okay? See these on here on the left, these bat signs? The only time, and obviously there's a bat at our hotel, the only time I've seen bats, like signs like this, is at the bat cave in, uh, was it Ratchaburi? Was it Ratchaburi? Yeah, I think it was Ratchaburi. And they had, you know, nine million bats flying out the cave every evening. So maybe because of these, you know, areas, there must be loads of caves. And maybe the bats fly out. So stay tuned. Maybe we'll have another amazing experience with bats. And um, let's follow this car. This here looks like a sign to something. It's in Thai, but it must be good, right? And this is what it's all about when you're doing Thailand. You know, come to Thailand and get a little motorbike. You don't have to get a crappy Honda Dream. Get, get a nice rental bike. Get yourself something with power, something with comfort. And just come out to the provinces. Get out of the comfort zone. Where has this guy taken us? <laughs> Let's find out. There's a watering hole, and there's some kids swimming. That's a good start. It says it's open from six till six. Whatever this is. And there's lots of people here, on the other side. What is this? Oh, I think we have to cross the water, guys. Yes, we do. so fun. Oh look, there's like legitimate climbers. <gasps> See these people, they, they booked ahead. They booked the three days ahead. <laughs> so this is the, this is what they were talking about. This is the tour company that I wanted to climb. See, now I don't feel like bad because this is a legit thing, you know. They're climbing up this kind of cliffage. You know, you need real equipment, you need real guides. And obviously it's a busy thing. Obviously it's a popular thing to do. You know, I'm just starting to realize that you can't just have Thailand all to yourself like I've been having on this trip, you know. So many times I just drive to a province and I'm the only person there. You know, foreigner, the only foreigner, or the, pretty much the only tourist as well. But as Thailand opens up, and it's open now, Thai people are more relaxed and they're traveling more and foreigners are coming in. And things like this are things you need to book ahead in. You know, I need to start planning myself a little bit better. Recently we went to Doi Chang, Doi Chang in um, Chiang Rai and I wanted to just, you know, I just rocked up to these beautiful hotels and they said that they were fully booked for, for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I really need to start planning ahead a little bit. I don't have Thailand all to myself anymore, but that's okay. 
This is what we want. We want to see people. And look at these amazing dragonflies. Aren't they beautiful? Anyway. Let's see what else we can find. Sorry, <laughs> just realized I was recording for the last half an hour and I've just drained this battery. That happens a lot. Anyway, uh, me and Dreamy, we're just enjoying the incredible countryside and exploring these villages. Obviously, we just find out that we can't climb to the top of mountains because Thailand is not my personal playground. <laughs> we're slowly realizing we need to plan ahead. However, I just pulled up because I thought to myself, I think that's in range of my little sparky drone and I flew it all the way up to the summit, or as close as I could get to anyway, and the formations of the rock on the summit are so spectacular, so aggressive and sharp, and you can see a trail, and you can see like wooden platforms where people set up their tents, and then there's obviously a fantastic Thai flag flapping in the wind. And, you know, it's only 500 meters high, but, you know, if you think about that's where they've got to go, and we've driven probably about five minutes on the bike, and they probably start from the other side of that mountain over there. So it's a full on scale with, you know, it's not just climbing up some stairs, willy nilly, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This is, this is a, this is an absolute mammoth of a climb. I think you need to be really strong. Let's go find another cool thing in this province because we've still got a lot of light and I'll need to go home and recharge the battery. <laughs> called Roo Cave. Roo Cave, or Boat Cave, is a large cave that's located here. It's 1400 meters deep and um, there's, oh, there's a very special species of crab that lives inside here. Maybe we'll see one. Where are these monkeys at? I can hear them all being naughty. And there's leaves falling and rustling up there. Cheeky little monkeys. <laughs> okay, well, this national park is strange because they have a path and you go around and it's absolutely ridiculously beautiful but it's very confusing. <laughs> this is just a random spider. Can you see this guy? Like where is your web? Like in between these three trees? I don't know if you saw him. Anyway, I'm keeping my helmet on for this one because look, this is called Tao Cave which means turtle cave and I'm going to keep my helmet on because it looks like we might bang our head. Pretty cool. Oh God. Ugh. Gonna have a little peek and that's it. Is this like the beginning of a horror movie? Oh, that looks so cool. And so dangerous. Can you see the fallen, look at this. There's a big tree across the staircase and it's all flooded, but there is, oh, there's like a, it looks really cool in there. It looks like if you didn't mind getting your feet wet, you could, get in there and get far into it and then there's like an, a hole and there's, there's light coming through on the other side or maybe there's like a little area in the middle that's surrounded 360 by rocks but there's no chance that I'm going in there by myself not a chance in hell if I was with one other person I'd be like don't be a pussy come on <laughs> but it's just me
and I went to my accommodation and I asked if you know do the bats fly above the hotel and they said no but it's not far and it's 200 meters down the road and um, there's a viewing concrete viewing thing there's a little bridge and I would imagine at any minute now they'll start coming out because they come out at sunset don't they to go feed and uh, I learned something really fun about bats I'll tell you when they start coming out Okay, so I've come up to the little viewpoint. Everybody's leaving because it's a bit of a flop. But I'll tell you why it's not a flop for me because I have a drone. But um, <laughs> so I've flown the drone over there. I'll, I'll end the video with the beautiful shots I've just captured. I was down there for ten minutes, just just absolutely blown out of my mind. The, the the amount of bats coming out of that cave, and they're still coming out, and you can kind of see them from here. Um, the reason why they've built this, by the way, is because some nights the bats fly straight overhead and everyone screams and this is the perfect space to be at. But now everybody's left. Um, the reason is, is what, the last time I made a video about bats in Ratchaburi, somebody left a really interesting comment and that is bats, when they go out to feed every single night, they go in a slightly different direction every evening so sometimes they go east sometimes they go northeast the next day they're like let's go north and then someone will say no we went north last time let's go south and the reason is it's just an evolutionary advantage not to decimate the food supply in one direction when there's five million bats flying out of a cave and if they all just go in one direction every night then there'll, there'll be no berries there'll be no bugs to eat so they kind of 360 change direction each night and so this night they're kind of going a little bit out of the way and not over here and so everybody was kind of like oh didn't fly overhead it's not very good but um, like I said I ended the video I'll end the video with the drone shots because I was just <laughs> flying with the bats being careful not to crash into them but in enjoying the atmosphere of them coming out so let me end this incredible province with that incredible footage thank you for watching Pitsana look province Oh, what a beauty, huh? And uh, on to the next one.